You are listening to Meet the Thriller Author, the podcast where I interview writers of mysteries, thrillers, and suspense books. I am your host, Alan Peterson, and this is episode number 170. In this episode of the podcast, we'll be meeting Ian K. Smith, who is a New York Times bestselling author and physician. He may be best known for his expert health and fitness advice on national broadcasts and in his best-selling nonfiction books. Uh, you might know him best as uh, Dr. Ian, the host of The Doctors and the go-to medical expert for Rachel Ray and many other national television shows. Uh, but his crime novels have been uh, taken critics by and fans alike by storm. Uh, last year, Smith launched a new series set in his hometown of Chicago, featuring private investigator Ash Kane. And Wolf Point is the highly anticipated sequel to Unspoken, which is being published by Thomas and Mercer today, October 5th, 2021. So very excited to talk to uh, Ian about uh, writing uh, his crime thrillers, about his uh, amazing background. He's a physician and, uh, and on national television. So it's a lot of fun talking to him about all that. I uh, just want to let you know this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Audible. Go to thrillingweeds.com forward slash Audible for a free 30-day trial. Uh, not only will you get thousands of excellent mystery and thriller audiobooks on Audible, but you'll have access to podcasts and a lot of other stuff on there. So go check that out at thrillingweeds.com forward slash Audible. And Wolf Point, which is the uh, new thriller uh, from Ian K. Smith, uh, is available uh, on Audible as an audiobook. So uh, go check it out. I get a 30-day uh, free trial at uh, thrillingreads.com forward slash Audible. All right, here is my interview with uh, Ian K. Smith. Hey, everybody. This is Alan with Meet the uh, Thriller Author. And on the podcast uh, today, I have uh, Ian K. Smith, who is best known as uh, Dr. Ian, the host of The uh, Doctor's. And I go to medical expert for Rachel Ray and many other national shows. Uh, he lives in Chicago and is also a critically acclaimed and award-winning crime fiction writer. And his latest novel, Wolf Point, was inspired by a real-life local cold case. And it'll be out on October 5th. Uh, really excited to have uh, Dr. Ian here. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Man, I'm so glad to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, so I have to ask you because you're a very well-known physician and a national uh, broadcast uh, expert in fitness and health has there always been a, a fiction crime writer uh, trying to get out <laughs> always and uh you know i have loved crime fiction mystery detective genre um since i was small uh since i was in elementary school um i really wanted to start writing this type of genre um when i was in high school uh after reading john grisham's book the firm uh, before the firm even became a big hit. I read it when it was in paperback, actually. Uh, and so I really wanted to, I wanted to, to write those kind of books, but, you know, I was young and, you know, there were so many years I had, I wasn't even in college yet. Uh, and so what happened was basically uh, I spent many, many weeks and months in college kind of writing fiction, even though I was a pre hardcore pre-med major was going to be a doctor knew that but i've always felt like well why can't someone do more than one thing i mean why do i have to only be a doctor i mean i like to go watch movies mm -hmm. i like tv shows well, why can't why can't i also be creative enough to write those things so i've always had a passion for it um and finally i reached a point in my career from a publishing standpoint where i basically said to my editor listen i've always wanted to write this type of book i've been writing fiction for myself i want to be serious and publish it and get it out there. Well, that's so awesome. And, and, and I was kind of curious about that too. Was did your editors or publishers really like, well, maybe you should do like a, a medical thriller or <laughs> <laughs> did they try to push you into that direction? Well, <laughs> I will say that I had hoped that my divergence from what we had been publishing, which is basically health and weight loss books, I was hoping that my proposed divergence would be more warmly accepted and encouraged, but they didn't, sh they didn't shut it down. And, you know, I understand there's, you know, listen, it's like this, you know, you have your favorite musical artist and, you know, you always want to hear his or her hits. Like, you know, he better sing this. I want him to sing that. And the artist wants to try something different, something new that they've created. And so the publisher is like that. The publisher you know, wants the same hits, uh, which for them has been the weight loss books. And I, being the artist, says, yeah, I can do that stuff, but hey, let's try something new too. So they didn't shut it down, but they were not as warm and encouraging as I would have liked. 
<laughs> yeah, I can imagine like, hey, but this is selling. Uh, why don't we stay there? <laughs> <laughs> They're a yeah. business at the end of the day. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the publishing part, right? Is the business end of end of, end of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so um, so the, so. Your books now, so they're set in Chicago. They're a, a, a gritty crime thrillers, uh, crime fiction of uh, for readers, uh, for those, uh, readers and listeners who are listening. And if they're not familiar with your your fiction work, can you tell us a little bit about your style, about your your books. Your your, your... sure. So um, the Ash Kane series, which Wolf Point is book number two. Book number one was called The Unspoken. The Ash Kane series um, is based in Chicago. Chicago actually is a character. Chicago is a great city to have this type of, of, of series in. It's a gritty city. It's an affluent city. It's a sports city. It's a food city. It has everything. It has the lake uh, on the eastern part of the city. So Chicago is as much a character as Ash Kane, who is uh, the primary character, uh, who is the private investigator, who used to be a detective for CPD, Chicago Police Department. So that's the backdrop. You got this guy who leaves the department under kind of a cloud because he would not participate in the cover-up of a bad shooting. So he leaves, he stays and stands on his morals. He leaves the force, gets a little payout money and decides to hang up his own shop, uh, start his own shop, hang up his own shingle because he is someone who loves justice. And even though he's out of the official game of being a detective for CPD, he still says, hey, there's a role for me to play here in the city. And so he takes on very few cases. He takes on only cases that intrigue him. Uh, he's a golf fanatic um, and a car collector. And um, he, you know, he's a he's a man's man, but women like him also because he also has this sensitive side to him. He's kind of not been great in the romance department. He got stood up by his fiance who left him basically at the altar. So he's a he's a complicated guy but he's a fun guy and people like to root for him. And he is determined at all costs to get justice. So Wolf Point is his second adventure of of bringing justice to a family who suspects that their father did not die by suicide as was the official report. Yeah, I really like uh, really good to mention that I'm in Chicago too because I really got that vibe reading it. It's like kind of like Michael Connelly with Rudy Bosch in LA, but they, Chicago plays such a prominent role, and uh, in this book you have it. There's a there's a little political corrupt, uh, corruption. There's racial tension. Um, so is that were, were those uh, themes that you were that you wanted to address from the beginning when you started uh, planning out and thinking about writing these books? Absolutely, and you are completely correct. Um, I have a screenwriter. Uh, the, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, the book series has been optioned to become a TV series. Oh, sweet. And yeah, so the guy who's uh, writing the TV series with me, his great line is, just like you can't take Bosch out of LA, you can't take Kane out of Chicago. And uh, and so when you you say that reminds me of him, that's how he, 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 he positions it. Yeah, I mean, Chicago is a complicated, very layered city. It is corrupt to its core. It is also generous at times and loving. Um, It has racial tension. It just has all the elements that make it a very intriguing place. And by the way, this is just historical, the kind of city. I wasn't born in Chicago, uh, but I went to medical school here. Um, but, But when you learn about the history of the city and where it is now, you can see that there are certain elements of the city that are part of the city's backbone. And those elements are part of the identity of Chicago. Yeah, so infamous with the whole Cook County political machine from the, <laughs> it's like infamous. Uh... It's true. It's true. <laughs> and it exists. And a lot of work is done uh, in those dark rooms that the rest of us do not access. A lot of deals are cut. A lot of people are taken care of. That's just, and I'm not being pejorative and speaking negative of Chicago. And it's obviously not everyone, but I'm telling you that that level of old school wheeling, dealing, corruption, you p- wash my back, I'll wash yours. That is part of the fabric of the city. Yeah. Was it that governor that tried to sell uh, Barack Obama's uh, Senate seat when he became president? <laughs> a, a case A. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, that is a shining example of how things. And by the way, people here in Chicago 
were like, what's the big deal? This is how it works. <laughs> I mean, this is how, you know, the rest of the country was just, you know, aghast. How could this happen? I mean, this is just outrageous. Meanwhile, we're here like, yeah, I mean, this happens everywhere in the city. So it doesn't make it right. But I'm just saying, you know, this is how things are done here. Yeah, I also liked what I really liked about your your character, too, is, you know, like uh, in a lot of the uh, thrillers, the detectives, you know, they're like um, alcoholics or whatever. And uh, uh, Ash, is said, this is different. He's the, a fit. He's like working out. Uh, that was pretty cool. So you, you incorporated that because of your background. Was that important to you to kind of like tie in your your background into your character? Yeah, I think, you know, I was reading um, from an author who's saying that most writers try to infuse either themselves or who they want to be in mm -hmm. their characters. And so, yeah, I avoided the typical kind of, you know, slovenly drunk, you know, kind of messy personal life kind of detective. I mean, he's not perfect. He has his flaws. Uh, there's also a dark side to him, um, to Ash Kane, uh, that I won't give away to people, but there's a dark side that's very different than other detective or, or private investigators. But, you know, he's a fit guy. Um, you know, he likes sports. Uh, you know, he, he would like to have a great relationship. He doesn't have a great relationship yet. He's got a woman who he's, he, who, who he's interested in, but is afraid to take the leap because he still has PTSD from being left at the altar from what he thought was the true love of his life. So, you know, he has different layers, but I think that he's a different type of guy. I mean, I don't know anyone else out there um, in this genre, uh, a character like Ash Kane. And, and obviously, you know, authors want to create unique characters. And I hope that I created a somewhat unique guy who's different than everyone else. And so I was, I was when I was doing the research on this, uh, uh, for this interview, um, Wolf Point is based on a, a real case. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How that uh, how this uh, book came out came together for you? Yeah, it's interesting. So um, about four or five years ago, I forget how long it was. Several years ago, my father in law was talking about the um, uh, the former Chicago a former Chicago uh, school board president who was found half submerged in the Chicago River uh, by suicide. Uh, and an African-American, very politically connected, very well respected. You know, he was a guy about town. Everyone knew him. OK. And everyone on the south side of the city kept saying, how could this guy commit suicide? It doesn't ring true. Like he wasn't the kind of guy that would commit suicide. Then there were all these rumors about, you know, he was in financial trouble. He had made some bad deals. So it was just very controversial. And it always sat with me that here was a guy who was ostensibly at the top of his game. And then he decides to shoot himself in a rat infested area on the banks of the Chicago river. It just, I don't have any more information than anybody else. It just didn't ring true to me. So I thought it would be a great premise uh, for a novel to investigate what could be the possibilities other than the official reporting of what happened. Yeah, you do. You put in a lot of research in your books. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, what's your process like? Do you like do all the research first and then you just start writing them or? Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, by the way. You know, there are different styles. Authors have different styles, different ways they work. Some authors want to create something completely from nothing and just go wild with it. I really like the process of keeping the story as close to factual as possible. Obviously, I'm creating things within the, 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 the framework of reality, but I like to make sure the streets are going in the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. You take my books and it is a map of the city. I wrote a book called The Ancient Nine. And someone said to me, I could take your book and walk Harvard's campus. It's based on secret societies at Harvard. And I was a member of one. The, the, the reader said, I could take your book and walk and find everywhere in Cambridge in the campus because everything is so so to scale. And that's how I like to do my research. I like to understand process exactly. You know, what is the process uh, and the ME's office um, when you have a case like this? Who's the first person on the scene? Uh, what is the route that a person would take to get from point A to point B? Which directions do the roads go in? All these small details to me are not only fun to research, but I think as a reader that it's it feels good to know 
that this is reality, this is real. And I think it makes readers feel like they are in the scene, right? Someone said to me, when I read your books, I feel like I'm there. I can smell it. I can see it. Uh, I can hear it. And that's kind of that's kind of the reaction, the response I want from the reader. Yeah, and you have some uh, pr- uh, interesting connections uh, uh, with the police department because you uh, you do some fitness training for officers at the police academy. Uh, <laughs> uh, can, you, can you tell us about that? And have, have you heard from them now that you have two books out? Yeah. So I, for about a year, I trained hundreds of officers. I was doing this program, this health challenge, weight loss challenge for officers. It wasn't mandatory, but people could sign up. And hundreds of officers did throughout the city, South side, North side, West side. And it was a great experience. Um, number one, I love fitness. That's, that's the backbone of what I've been doing most of my career, but also it was great meeting real police officers and detectives. who I got to hang out with, I got to chop it up and talk about cases. They took me on ride alongs into some of the tough streets of Chicago at night. So, you know, in the car. So I got to actually experience what it's like being a detective, being a police officer. And the interesting thing is that um, I actually still have friends in the department and they helped me with the process. You know, like, what is the name of the computer system that you guys look up cases in? Where do you keep archived material? All this stuff that's factual and true and, 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 and to the point in the book is because I have people who help me with all this this information. And I just think that makes for a better narrative. It makes for a better read of a book. And I'm kind of curious on your approach to it because you've written many nonfiction books. Uh, is it different? Like uh, when you're getting ready to write a fiction versus nonfiction, is it, is it like a different uh, muscle that you have to use? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, some, of the, some of the same muscles, believe it or not. I mean, the research part of it, like I do with my nonfiction, is still the same. I mean, I... I work very hard to to find answers, not to be gratuitous. Obviously, as a fiction writer, I'm allowed to have you know creative privilege, so I use that sometimes. The different muscles is that you know, whereas when I'm writing a weight loss book or a health book, you know, I have kind of a hypothesis of where I want to go and what the theme is, and I use the research to back up what I think a plan is that will work, and then I actually test the plan on thousands of people in my Facebook group. But here, it's really just me saying you know, I want to see this character do this, or I want to create a scenario where this kind of action occurs. So, you know, the different muscle is I'm allowed to kind of go way off script uh, and the canvas is completely as clean as I want it to be to do what I want. That's going to be a little liberating uh, when you're writing fiction, then you kind of like, kind of, kind of, kind of run, you can run a little bit more wild. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. And that's why, you know, Nothing against people who only write nonfiction. I did it for many years, obviously. But there is a liberation that comes in writing fiction. If a nonfiction writer has, uh, you know, fiction dreams like I always did, there is something from a creative standpoint that's very liberating uh, and very engaging to be able to just create story and not have to worry about whether or not you have five supporting studies that show that, you know, the best way to burn calories is through high intensity interval training. Um, no, it's beautiful to be able to just sit down, you know, with my computer screen and my cursor blinking and just go to town on something I've com- completely created on my own or that I've heard a similar story about and decided to make it something completely different. I mean, that is very liberating. And you have such a busy schedule. I was wondering what the, what, what's like a typical writing day for you when you're w- working on one of these? Do you like set specific times or do you work it in when you can? Yeah, you know, I'm a zone writer um, and, you know, we all write differently. Um, I get into really intense writing zones where it literally is just flowing out. But what I do differently than a lot of other writers is I write my book in my head first. Mm. So I spend a couple of months just thinking about the concept. Look, I don't write anything down. I think about maybe the title I'll write down, working title. But I think about kind of how does the book open up? What's going to be my middle point? And then, you know, what's going to be the denouement? of the book at the end. And so I think about those major plot points. I think about what the twists look like. I think about some interesting characters. And when I feel like I have pretty much figured out the direction of the book, then I'll sit down and start writing. And the advantage of that for me is that I never have writer's block because it's just flowing out of my head. It's already in my head. It's a matter of getting it from my head uh, to my fingers uh, on the keypad, and it works well for me. So, a couple months thinking about it, I sit down and I can write 
once I have it in my head, I write very quickly because it's all there and I'm just kind of connecting the dots and filling some holes in. So that's my process. I like to write early in the morning. Uh, I like to write late at night. Uh, and when I really start writing, I don't really have a clock. Um, you know, I may be writing to three o'clock in the morning, go to sleep for a few hours and get back up at six. It depends on where I am in the book, how, where, what my momentum is like. You know, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm in a really great part. And so that's kind of that's how I like to write. Oh, so you so you, do you put down like an outline on paper? It's like in your head. Oh, no outline. No. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of writers traditionally and classically do outlines. Mm -hmm. But for me, an outline can be somewhat restrictive. I want to have the freedom that if I decide to change a plot point, that I can do that on the fly and not say, oh, geez, well, the outline says I'm supposed to go here and everything else after this point is predicated on that particular instance. And now I'm changing it. So everything else changes. No, I like to kind of, I like to freewheel it. It's just fun. It's, <laughs> it's, it's harder, by the way, to freewheel it because you know, you got to think on the fly. So I think I, I also like the challenge of freewheeling it and making it all still be cohesive. I mean, you went to medical school, so you could handle <laughs> so this, I mean, this, this is probably like, oh, I could handle this. Uh, or or, or do, do you find that that helped a lot, like your, your previous training, or is it just completely different? Uh... I think from an academic standpoint, two of the most difficult things you can do is go to medical school and law school mm -hmm. and complete those schools. Um, those two schools, I'm not saying others are not difficult, but I have more experience with those. Those two graduate schools and fields of study are extremely rigorous. Uh, a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of late nights, a lot of stress, uh, a lot of information. And so I always set, tell my friends, if you get through medical school and you can get through a, a, a medical residency, you can do almost anything that, you know, and it's true. I mean, it's, you know, imagine a guy who spends his life training for marathons and becomes a master at running marathons. And then you say to him, hey, can you run two or three miles? I mean, <laughs> that's nothing for him. And I, I think the same thing for me. I don't want to say it's nothing, but for me to write um, and what I have to write is not it's not heavy lifting for me because of my experience academically and what I had to get through. Yeah, because once you're once you start your schooling and then you're an actual physician, I mean that's like what 10, 10 years or something, or how long does that take? It depends on your specialty, but it's four years of medical school. Then depending on your residency, it could be four to six years of residency. Then you may do a fellowship. I mean, it really depends on uh -huh. your route that you want to take. You can make it, you know, as 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 less time as possible, or you can make it a lot of time. So it it runs the gamut, but even the even the person who has the least amount of time commitment, it's still relatively speaking, a big time commitment. Mm -hmm. And when you compare it to writing, um, because I do both, um, you know, the writing part of it, you're in control. I'm in control of my time when I'm right. I can write when I want to write, how long I want to write. When you talk about medicine, um, you're not in control of a lot of parts of your day and in some aspects, parts of your career. And so it's a, just a very different experience. I was wondering what what was the the reaction you you got when you first published your first uh, fiction book from I mean like because you you know you've been on the Rachel Ray show you haven't been know a lot of uh, big national type people were they surprised or did they know that 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 they had that you had that desire yeah they were shocked they just yeah. they they didn't understand what I was doing <laughs> like <laughs> what do you mean you're writing fiction what do you mean you wrote a novel um, because a lot of people have not known that that's been a passion of mine for a very long time. And I never publicized it and said, Hey, I want to write novels one day. I mean, people who really know me, they've known that for a long time, but yeah, most of the public was shocked, but they were also happy. They were, mm -hmm. they loved it. They were like, wow, this is good. You know? So they would say, man, this is actually really good. Like, you know, we didn't expect it to be good, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, you know, I even have family members, who said, I don't, I never read books, you know, fiction, but man, I actually enjoyed your book. Like it, it was actually a good story. So, <laughs> so yeah, people were a little shocked by it, but uh, that's to be expected. You know, I, I wrote, I don't know how many, 18, 17 books that were nonfiction. And I start write, writing, writing uh, 
fiction that that's to be expected uh, i was curious too with the crazy year and a half that we've been having with this pandemic did that affect uh, or change your writing process or style at all and are you planning to address covid in, the, in any future books what's your your plans on that oh my goodness so you know there's been so much bad about covid obviously mm-hmm. loss of life loss of life experience suffering there's so much bad about it but i've also said to people there's been some good stuff about covid also the pandemic we've learned a lot about ourselves and each other but for me personally, it was such and has been such a productive period. I wrote two and a half books during COVID um, because I wasn't traveling like I typically do when I'm on tour. So I'm at home um, nonstop, not going anywhere. Um, and I like to write. It's, you know, writing is not a chore for me. So my goodness, I had all the time in the world uh, to sit down and to write and write and write. And I did. Um, and it was just been an extremely productive uh, period for me. And I you know, I always say, you know, you've got to find the silver lining in the cloud. Mm-hmm. And for me, that silver lining was the freedom um, to actually work and, and do work that I like and love to do. And so, so what, what, what's next for you? Are there, are there going to be any uh, more books in this series? Oh, yeah. So the, so the book's been optioned to become a TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're working on that as we speak. We're in the final stages um, of negotiation. Uh, but yeah, no, this is going to be a series. I mean, I. Awesome. I'd like to get 10, 10 Ash Kane novels at least um, and maybe do a spinoff. Yeah, this Ash Kane is here to stay. He's fun to write. People are really responding to him and liking him and wanting more of him. And an author could not want anything more than that than the reader to say, I want the next installment. So uh, knock on wood, Ash Kane is here. Yeah, I was wondering too. Now you said you were helping write with the uh, the script for the uh, television show. How how have you done worked on scripts like that before? Is it different from writing a novel? It's very different. I actually wrote a screenplay for my um, my second novel. It's called The Ancient Nine. So I actually wrote a, a screenplay for it, and we're going to be shopping that around. So very different, very very different. You know, you have so much room and space in a novel to really dissect things, to explain things, to explore. When you're writing for TV or writing for movies, it's very tight, um, you know, and you can't delve into everything. You got to choose what you really dig into. So very different style of writing, still fun in a different way, still fun. Um, But, you know, I like the I like long format. I like the ability to be able to take you places and to take my time describing it to you uh, and to let. Um, and to let characters speak and you to listen to the dialogue. And it's just that, you know, movie and TV writing is just a whole different beast. And it just, the format itself just doesn't allow that. As we wrap, wrap up here, but I, I really love your covers. They're so cool. The, like the, the typography and the background in Chicago there is really, really nice covers. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate that, by the way. I'm a big package guy. Some authors don't really care about what the covers look like. They don't care about the titles. I love packaging, which means I love the title of the book, the image of the book, the size of the book, all those things, which a lot of authors, once again, don't really care about. I actually care about it because I love books. I'm a lover of books and I'm attracted to books. I'm attracted to the way a book looks, what the title is, all these things that I find important. Also, I'm very vigilant about making sure that the um, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted on my book. So for you saying that, you like the covers. I appreciate that because that means a lot to me. And I work hard with the designer to make sure we get it right. Uh, Wolf Point comes out on October 2nd, right? That's the date. Is it, has it changed? Uh, Wolf Point? Something like that. October 2nd, October 5th. I'm not, I'm not sure what the date is. I probably should know. But yeah. uh, just that like being the- said, people, people can get it on Amazon. They can pre-order it on Amazon. And also, if they want to reach out to me, um, my Instagram is at Dr. Ian Smith. Spell the doctor out. I A N Smith. They can send me hopefully a nice message on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and I just looked it up. It's October fifth, but it is available for pre order now. So uh, people should go check it out. I, I I received an advanced copy so, uh, from your publisher. So thank you very much, uh, and enjoyed it very much. So I highly recommend uh, Wolf Point to the uh, to the listeners. Alan, I appreciate having this conversation. It means a lot, not just for me, but for you to talk about books in general. We need more people talking about great books. All right, great. Thank you. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Meet the Thriller Author. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with one of your favorite writers of mysteries and thrillers. Or if this episode's guest is new to you, 
I hope you give their books a chance. Helping listeners discover new authors and books is one of the coolest outcomes of doing this podcast. As always, you can head over to thrillerauthors.com to sign up to my Thrilling Reads email list. That way you won't miss out on any great deals in thriller and mystery books. You can also check out all the links and resources in the show notes for this episode over at thrillerauthors.com. And also please do subscribe to this podcast if you haven't done so already and leave a rating and review wherever it is that you're listening to this uh, show. If you have done that already, I thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate your support. For my other links to my author website, social media haunts, and more uh, check out thrillingreads.com for slash links all my links will be uh, on that uh, page so that's it for this episode uh, see you next time and stay safe out there